so this is what we uh, uh, were discussing why we need all these internal external net translator why can't we use a, a one single ip address for each and every machine or device we have in the world it is because the reason is this ipv4 as we have discussed earlier right so what are those uh, limitations we have with this ipv4 addressing so as you can see here this is the format of an ip address this is the example of ipv4 and this is the address of a machine which is provided by your isp okay which is provided by your sp in uh, as present scenario okay so in that case what is the particular format of ipv4 this is a 32 digit bit okay so it would be more correctly correct uh way of saying this is 8 bits digit would be the decimal because digit we use as a decimal okay but bits we use as a binary format either when we are talking about 0 and 1 we generally say it's bits not digit okay so it means uh when we talk about ipv4 the size of ipv4 ip address would be 32 bits okay and we have divided this uh, these 32 bits in four parts 8 8 8 and 8 so we have divided this uh part as 8 and 8, 8. this is these are the number of bits but as you can see these are just three bits but these are three digits not bits okay and the difference between bits and digits is these are decimal okay all these numbers are decimal but when we talk about bits uh, these are the eight bit means you have to write it in a binary format so this denote this is binary and this is decimal okay so if you want to say a one in decimal you have to write all these bits in a binary okay all these are the binary bits so if you have this format 8.8 8.8 and 8 right this is a 32 bit so 8 cross 4 would be 32 right 8 cross 4 so is this is the format of that so if let's say if we write 0 at every place if we just talk about the 8 bits now we are not talking about uh, 32 bits as of now let's discuss only this part or this single part of this 32 bit this is this would be the one fourth part of this these 32 bits so if we can understand the structure of these 8 bits then we can definitely understand the structure of these 32 bits by the rule of reference so let's understand these 8 bits and what are the use of 8 bits in ipv4 so these are if these are the 8 bits what what are the possibility if we can write zero at each and every bit if we have eight places let's say if we write zero on each and every place or we have a choice to write one but these are just two choices okay these are not enough choices this would become the minimum value and this would become the maximum value because at each and every place if you look at this scenario this is first place this is second place each and every place we have two choices to put either we put 0 or 1 so let's say in this scenario we put 0 in the second place we choose 1 and we can follow this pattern this would again become a number so we can uh, you know change let's say in the next i'll write this one this is also a number created by 8 bits right so how many possibilities are there to create such numbers if we can write zero and when uh, over each and every place then at at each place we have two choices and how many number of uh, of places we have eight so in that case if we have two choices at each places okay and we have eight such places then the number of possibility would be 2 to the power 8 this is basic uh, mathematic okay uh, of a permutation combination then you figure out if we have you know if we have uh, 0 and 1 and we have eight places okay and these are the possibilities the number of combination we have would be 2 to the power 
these are the amount of numbers we can generate out of eight digits having two choices okay if we have three choices then what would be the number the number would be 3 to power 8 because at each place we would have three choices okay and we have eight places then in that case the num amount of numbers would be 3 to power 8 3 to power 8 so if in ipv4 we have just talked about eight bits right if we talk about eight bits not 32 bits okay 32 bits is the whole size of your ipv4 if we just talk about this eight bits eight places to keep our eight numbers okay the first number would be if we place zero at each place and the last number would be two two five five and why let's understand that this would be the last number why because we can put one at each and every place and still it is becoming two uh, two to the power eight minus one why minus one because if you start from okay let's understand this this is very simple if you calculate to give our rate it would return you 26 5 56 so if you start from 1 2 then where it would end 256 right but if you start from 0 then where it will end because you must understand this this would also give you 256 number and this would also give you 256 number so in binary in this format we we use this zero notation we start from zero and we will go to the end that's why this minus one is being used because we have to make it we have to make it 256 okay if we write zero at each and every place we will return that if we write one each and every place it would return that not two key power it would become 256 it is true but it is not like that what it is it is to keep our 8 minus 1 or to keep our n minus 1 this is also a basic mathematics so it is just about the 8 bits but as we know this is just a portion this is one fourth portion of 32 bits so if we talk about 32 bits it means we have 32 places instead of 8 and at each and every place we have two choices okay so when we have two choices if you calculate it it would become 1.2 billion okay it would become 1.2 billion and if we know the population the current population of the world it is around 7.8 billion as of now okay it means if we have all these unique ip addresses we cannot even assign all these ip addresses to each and every person if we consider each and every person would be having just single device in that case also these 4.2 billion ip addresses wouldn't be enough for 7.2 billion people even if one person uses one device but in our case if a person using two three devices let's say i have two laptop i have two phones i have a printer okay in that case i have four five devices so there would be so many people like me having more devices than me then this format this ipv format is not providing you this ipv format of 32 bits is not providing you enough number of permutation or combinations to figure out a unique ip address of all the the devices in the world if we are meant to assign a particular unique ip address to a device then this ipv4 is not enough that you must understand we usually have more than one devices in that case then 4.2 billion is less than to provide a unique ip address to each and every device in the world okay so this is the limitation or not enough number of ip addresses we don't have okay we don't have enough number of IP addresses. So in that case, what we will do, we try to use less number of public IP addresses over here and we will provide this ISP and we will let this ISP to create different internal IP addresses to communicate among them, okay? And to identify this net router public, 
we only need one public IP address for this whole local network. So let's say 10,000 devices are connected with this whole local network, okay, in this GHU network, 10, 20,000 devices, and then we just need one public IP address. Then if we go through this way, then it is easy. If we can assign the public IP addresses to the net, and the private IP addresses will be assigned to the local network by your ISP. Then in that way, they have introduced this private, this net translator. So it was the mistake of the previous engineers who have created this IPv4. They have not realized that over the period of time, this number, 4.2 billions, billions IP addresses, okay? would not be enough after some time. So we are, we have faced many issues. In order to recover or in order to resolve this issue, the net was introduced. So in order to use a very less number of public IP addresses. So these public IP addresses are assigned to very few network routers or uh, the network providers, okay? And then it would become the responsibility of those ISP to provide a particular data to a particular uh, machine through the that particular local network. So in order to solve uh, the solution, this is a temporary solution. Actually, uh, in order to solve the problem, this net private and public is the temporary solution, okay? Because it is very complex. Let's come to our first uh, reason. What if each and every device in the world would have a particular, let's say, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this would be a unique number to my machine. Let's say if they give me this unique number, okay, then over the internet, if you don't assign this number to any other device in the world, then it would be super easy. I know through I, uh, IPv4 it is not possible because the number of IP addresses generated by IPv4 is quite less. So if there can be a mechanism which can assign me a unique IP address, then these private, public and, and net router wouldn't be in the picture. So in order to solve this problem permanently, the IPv6 was introduced. You must understand this. So IPv, IPv, the size of, you know, to know the permanent solution, first look at this. Okay, to know the permanent solution, 32 bits are not enough. So what if we can increase the number of bits to 128? If we can use 128 bits, then the possibilities or the number of, uh, the number generated by this 2 key power, 2 key power 128 would be so high. It is almost, uh, I would say, very, very huge number, okay? There is no way that we can use all these unique IP addresses in nearby future anyhow. So these days, this these IP addresses, IPv4 uh, you know, uh, addresses would be inculcated into the network at a particular time when everything would be stable. This, this IPv4, the net private and public would be discarded. Okay, till that point, uh, I think companies are working, the ISPs are working uh, in order to stabilize this IPv6 addressing of a network. If you can, even if you open a device, it, uh, the network uh, settings of a device, you will find IPv4 and IPv6 settings, but it is not stable yet. Otherwise, IPv4 would be considered as a, you know, a unique IP address. So if we have such a number of huge IP addresses, then we can assign a particular unique public IP address to each and every device. Let's say I have using five devices, then I I would be having five different public addresses because IPv6 has such a, can provide me a unique IP address. So each and every, let's say a new device is connected to the internet, then it will assign a new number to that device, okay? So it would be a very simple network. So that was the mistake by the previous engineers that we have, uh, in order to resolve that issue, uh, temporarily we have to we had to introduce net router. But once uh, this would be in the picture, 
everything will be dissolved. I, the private, public, or the net. A simple unique IP address of each and every device would be used. So each and every device can have its own IP address. Uh, this is the permanent solution. So all these private and public would be replaced by a sim single pu public IP address. Okay. So in this lecture, we have covered internal, external, or the public IP address, net, IPv4, and IPv6. But I would suggest you one thing. We have all, uh, you know, we have gone through uh, all these uh, uh, topics just to understand the flow of what we are uh, going to do. So all these things, what we have discussed on the today's lecture would help us to, you know, uh, to understand this client and server communication. Okay, we have learned all these basics of networking in order to understand the client and server communication very well. Why? Because if we talk about one-way communication and two-way communication, right? In that case, we use socket and socket programming. Then why, where do we use all these things? Why we have learned all these things in this lecture? What is the significance of learning all these things? Let's understand this very, very first of all. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell you this thing. If we have a client, if we have a server, okay? Let first of all let's understand they are all they are let's say twenty thousand computers in a network, and this is the first PC and this is the last PC. Okay, this is the last PC, and you want to send some data and you want to communicate with that. So if it is in the local network, then why do we need to go to the internet? I just use the ISP of my network, okay? Because ISP would provide me uh, the the IP address of each and every device, a unique IP address to that. So if I can use that, then I have the permission from the other device to send a request. The choice of the server or the responder would be not to send or resend for the reply to that request, but definitely we can send the request, okay? So we want to use this IPv4 or IPv6. We, as of now, we use IPv4. Uh, IPv6, uh, it's not in the picture as of now. So we want to use all these IP addresses to communicate inside this local network. So if you visit the lab, then what we will do, we run a server program over here, we run the client program over here, and we try to communicate with each other, having or sharing our same local network. So in order to understand this private IP address, because I find sometimes people get confused this, what is a public IP address, what is private IP address. So in order to understand that we have gone through this lecture, but the main thing is how to get this private IP address. And after knowing this, we can communicate with each other in a particular local net area network, because to know the public IP of uh, a particular machine over the internet it is not that easy. For a local network, it is totally easy task, okay? So this is the way to how to know your uh, uh, private IP address or internal IP address. You can check the IPv4 setting over your um, to terminal or the network and you would know your private IP address provided by the ISP. You must understand that, okay? If you change the ISP, uh, the things would change, okay? So this is all about today's lecture. If you have any doubt, you can ask during the doubt session. So thank you so much for today's lecture, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Have a good day.